Oh, God. Oh, we're back. We're back in Dominaria. When will it end? When will our suffering end? Hopefully this draft is when our suffering will end. Because we went in a different direction this time. We've been lured far too often by blue. I'm told it's the best color, although in this set, it's not like previous sets, the last few sets we've had, where there's a clear outlier. One color that is far above or far behind everything else. But we have drafted blue too many times now, so we, ne we needed to do something different. So I went in hoping to force some domain, and that is what we have done. So we are base Jund domain. So we're base black, red, green. We first picked a Hurloon Battle Hymn. This is two and a red instant. It deals four damage to a creature or planeswalker, but as a kicker for one white. If you kick it, you gain four life. And then we second picked a red rare, Temporal Firestorm. Three red red for a sorcery. Choose up to X creatures and or planeswalkers you control, where X is the number of times this spell was kicked. You can kick it for one in a white and or one in a blue. You phase those permanents out, and then you do five damage to each creature and planeswalker. So, base level... This is a 5 mana deal 5 to everything, which is already very good. It's a 5 mana Wrath, which you should be happy to play, um, but it can get even better. If you have extra mana, you draw it late. This will save your best creature or your best two creatures while wiping the rest of the board. So that's great. Um, we also have Molten Monstrosity, Moss Beard Ancient, Boar Tuck Bone Rattle to buy back things later in the game, two copies of Myria's Outrider, this is the 5 mana 4-4 four, four reach, and it lava axes the opponent for your domain, how many basic land types you have when it comes into play. So that's sweet, love that. Um, and then the earlier spells we have, we've got a Blight Pile to hold down the fort, we have two copies of Get to Amplifier. This is the two mana one two. It gets pumped for instance and sorceries, but it also can just bounce creatures if you kick it for three extra mana. We've got Phyrexian Rager. We've got two copies of Death Bloom Gardener. This is the three mana mana dork that ha also has Death Touch. I think that's going to be pretty potent with our deck. And yeah, we'll just have to see how we do this time around at bat. Keep your expectations low, and keep your cheeks spread. Let's get into game number one. Opponent goes first. All right, let's keep track this time. This is one opponent going first. Let me take a little note of this. Okay, us, them. That's one for them. We, are, we have four lands representing four different land types. We have a Deathbloom Gardener. A Mirror's Outrider and the Temporal Firestorm. This seems very keepable to me. There's a, a decent chance that we could. Okay, we drew a Mossbeard Ancient. That's going to be good to recover after the Temporal Firestorm. I'm hoping that we can just let them play a bunch of creatures. They play Phyrexian Missionary. This is the 2 3 lifelinker for 2. Okay, we drew a Mirror's Outrider. Not really sad about that. We might cast a Deathbloom Gardener. Opponent is white, green, black, hits us for two with the missionary, 18 to 22. Okay. No extra play from them. Okay, I think since they didn't play another creature, we're just going to go Wooded Ridgeline and just slow roll and hopefully get a two or more for one. They play Gibbering Barricade. A three mana nightmare wall that has three sack a creature gain a life draw a card okay uh, i'm gonna play another land and skip the turn i'm gonna hit control to make them think we have something in hand it's 14 to 26 they scout the wilderness and kick it so they're gonna get a basic land into play plus two one ones so now do we just go for it and firestorm them? Or can we wait one more turn and maybe get them to play one more thing? Oh, I'm greedy. I'm going to play Deathbloom Gardener. So this is going to make it so that they'll have to, I think, play some more things into us. They're attacking with their 1-1s. One 
No blocks for us. It's 12 to 26. They cast nothing else. Okay, so now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana out. Uh, we should have played our tap land. Uh, that was a mistake. No, but we have 7 out right now with our Deathbloom Gardener. So I think we just Moss Beard Ancient. The 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven ETBs we gain 5. And they immediately extinguish the light on it. But now it's 17 to 26 and we drew out that removal spell from them. Now they cast the Elfame Worm. Okay. They hit us back down to 13. They're at 20. I mean, they have a lot of life, obviously. I think now we probably just Temporal Firestorm. Is there any point in getting more greedy than this? Play this. Temporal Firestorm kicked for one in a white. Phase out our Deathbloom Gardener. And their entire board is gone. And they their return is a Hexbane Tortoise. And a Samai Herbalist. Okay, we're in beautiful shape now. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to nine mana available. So we can go Forest, Magna Goth Sentry, Miria's Outrider, deal five to them. 13 to 23, and we have two 4 4 Reachers in play. Shockingly, we have two cards in hand, and so do they. But they also, their best play on their turn was Semi Herbalist and Hexbane Tortoise. Okay, they have a Citizen's Arrest, though. Arresting our Myria's Outrider. That's fine. They're going to attack us with Semi Herbalist, scrying one and keeping it on top. I mean, we're going to call their bluff here and just block that Herbalist. They have Bite Down. So we trade creatures. This is all going okay. Now we can cast another Myria's Outrider. So now it's 13 to 19. And we just attack them with a Death Bloom. Eh, I don't really see a point in that. They cast Aaron Benalia's Ruin. This is a 3 mana 3 3 menace. White, black, tap, sack a creature, put a 1 1 counter on each creature you control. We drew a land. We need to stop drawing lands here. Let's just really quickly see how many lands we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 total. So in our remaining 23 cards, we only have just a handful of lands left. So I think no attacks this turn. They cast, they drew their empty hand, they cast King Darien the 48th. This is the 2 3 anthem effect for the rest of their team. Pay 5, put a 1 1 counter on King Darien, and make a 1 1 white soldier. We drew broken wings. So I think we just pass to them, because on our turn, we'll be able to broken wings the citizens rest and get back a second Maria's Outrider. Okay, resolve that. They activated their King Darien, of course. And then they just pass. Need to Broken Wings this turn. On the Citizen's Arrest. Five more damage to them. It's 13 to 14. But their army is getting out of control. We drew a Phyrexian Rager. We'll happily cast that. We lose a life, so it's 12 to 14. But we draw a card. A Bortuck Bone Rattle. So we can get back what... A Magna Goth Sentry? Is that worth doing? I think we need to attack them this turn. Go to attacks. Attack with both Myria Outriders. So they have 8 damage coming at them right now. They bite down one of them. They took, And then they traded the Tortoise for our other one. So now we can... Second main phase, Bortuck Bone Rattle. Get back. Do we want a Moss Beard Ancient? Or just another Myria's Outrider? I think just a Myria's Outrider. I don't know, that's a close call. So now it's 12 to 9. The trouble is, they have this engine where they can make more of these 2 2 soldiers. They cast another rare, Nemata Primeval Warden. 
It's currently a 4 mana 4 5 reach. If an opponent, creature an opponent controls would die, exile, and they get a 1 1 Sapperling. Then they have green, sack a Sapperling. It gets plus 2 plus 2. 1 and a black, sacrifice 2 Sapperlings, draw a card. That's so much action. That's actually nuts. We drew a goblin picker, so you know, not too bad for us. We're also not doing too shabby. No attacks, please. Okay, they're sacrificing a soldier to get 1-1 counters on all their things. They scout the wilderness. So they're going to get two more. Two, two soldiers. We drew aggressive sabotage. Target player discards two cards. If this spell is kicked, it deals three damage to that player. So we have three extra damage that we can hit them with out of nowhere. I think we just goblin pick it, though. That's just not very good. Discard aggressive sabotage. Draw blight pile. It's not the worst. At least it's a consistent damage source for us. And it blocks a, a token. No attacks for us this time, please. Braids frightful return. We need them to miss at some point. We've drawn three more lands than them so far. Goblin Picker's gonna help. And they get back a Phyrexian Missionary. Which means they also get back an Elf Worm. Missionary's just an A card. I fully stand by that. We drew a Forest, so we're gonna cycle it. With our Goblin Picker. We drew another Death Bloom Gardener. Honestly, not the worst. That's why this card is one of the reasons why this card is good. Just having extra death touchers makes their life a lot more difficult. So now we can pass to them and put a stop at the end of their turn. So we can activate our blight pile. Uh, we sacrifice a non-land permanent. Would we like to do that? If we don't we lose to life, and they draw a card. I guess we need to sack our Phyrexian Rager. They still get a, a Sapperling for Namada, the primeval warden. This is rough. Surely they gotta start attacking here pretty soon. Okay, they're activating King Darien again. Sure. Okay, they're still not attacking. They should be attacking at this point. I know they're going to lose some stuff because we have these Death Touchers, but Herborg Repossession. So we can kick this and get a creature and another permanent back to our hand. That's great. So let's get back a Mossbeard Ancient and a Myria's Outrider, please. So now we can just cast a Mossbeard Ancient, which keeps them off our back. I like that. 7-7 seven, seven, Trample, we're back to 19, they're at 8. And now our Blight Pile plus our last copy of Miria's Outrider are poised to get us the win. Holy moly. This is very, uh, very touch and go. Okay, now they're activating Aaron. Beefing up their entire squad. Very scary. The biggest problem for us at this moment is the Phyrexian Visionary. Which is a 4 or 5 lifelinker. Yep, putting another 1 1 counter on all their stuff. Are they just attacking with all their little dorks? So they're attacking with 2 3 3 3 3s right now. We know that they can't. What can they do? They can sacrifice a creature to put 1 1 counters on all creatures they control. Okay. So we do get a free block on a soldier. We get a free block on... We'll take the block on the Sapperling. That's totally free. And we could trade with a soldier, but I don't really care. So I'm just going to say one blocker on the missionary. Or on the uh, Sapperling, excuse me. I said missionary because I'm so worried about that freaking card. Right, let's activate Blight Pile. So now it's 13 to 7. Our turn. Drew an, a Tangled Islet, which is not good. Let's go ahead and cycle that. 
get you another tap land. Please. Okay, so now what do we do? Gamiria's Outrider. Which will put them down to two. And then we just have to survive next turn. Yeah, let's go for Miria's Outrider. There's no point in slow rolling that. They know about it. They're at two. So now we have Blight Pile. Okay, let's pass to them. Again, the big issue here is that they're going to pump up a bunch, which they're doing now at the end of turn. And this Phyrexian Missionary is getting huge. It's currently a 5-6 lifelinker. Elfheim Worm. I think they just need to attack with Missionary. And this game will be very difficult for us to win. They're activating King Darien. Go to attacks. Okay, now they're alpha striking. Okay, they have nothing in hand. So they're going to gain 5 life here. And go to 7. And we have 13 life remaining. So... Let's go to blockers. So we block a death toucher on King Darien. A death toucher on Namada. Moss Spirit Ancient on... Phyrexian Missionary. And that will... We're still dead if we take the remaining damage here, so we have to block a little bit more. Do we block a Blight Pile on a Soldier? Okay. There's our blocks. And then we can activate Blight Pile. Oh, but of course they're going to get a bunch of Sapperlings, right? Yes, they get three saplings, so they have lots of blockers now. Well, if we... We're at two, by the way. <laughs> if we full send an attack right now... One, two, three, four, five. We have five creatures, and they have five blockers, so no damage gets through. They lose everything, but we die on our turn. Let's start by goblin picking again. Ditch a geothermal bog another land. So how many lands are we talking about now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have two lands in and there are many 10 cards. Alright, great. Awesome. Let's see. We can attack with... Alright, let's attack with our three four fours. Now. Let's attack with our 7-7. Seven, seven. And a 4-4. Four, four. Two attacks. Okay, so they're triple blocking Mossbeard Ancient. They go to 1. Now we can play Elfheim Worm. I think we're just dead, though, still. Because, of course, they can... They just need to attack. Right? They just win with a full-out attack. Because we can t we can double block air on, and we still take three damage. So we we just lost. Oh my god! What a crazy game. Um, let's go ahead and view the battlefield real quick. So they had how many cards left in their library? Thirteen cards left in their library. So how many lands did I wind up drawing that game? So he said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have three fewer cards in library, and we drew three additional lands. It's not so unfortunate, man. Even our goblin picker was like churning through our library, too. Dang. That game started out so sweet, too, with that firestorm. Well, it gives me hope. It gives me hope. Uh, this deck so far because that deck we went up against was absolutely insane. Just three giga powerful rares that just got to do their thing after we firestorm them, man. Well, break time for me. I'll see you after the break in game number two. Do you love watching movies? Do you hate watching movies? Boy, oh boy, do I have the show for you. 
on watching movies. April and Kenny watch movies. Instant classics like Pride and Prejudice and The Mummy. Despicable gutter trash like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Divisive, controversial picks like 2001, A Space Odyssey. Each month our hosts discuss and analyze a movie, then put out a watch-along commentary track, enticing. Whether you like watching movies or hate watching movies, you'll love watching movies with April and Kenny. Now streaming on your favorite platform. Oh my god, we're back. It's very funny because I feel like I need to recap where we're at. But for you, you just got done listening to Game 1, which was a close and painful loss. For me, i would taken about a week off in between Game 1 and Game 2. But it all feels right with the world because our opponent is going first. What about us? Well, we've got three lands, lots of different colors. A Goblin Picker, which I like. A Death Bloom Gardener, which I like. Eerie Soul Tender. This all seems fine. A Worthy, Keepable Hand. It goes Crystal Grotto. This is the Scry 1 land, adds colorless, and can filter a mana. We're just going to lead a uh, Geothermal Bog. As you'll recall, having just listened to the previous game, we've got lots of tap lands. This is like a reminder for myself of what we're doing here. We're trying to be Domain. Got lots of tap lands, lots of high end. Lots of Myria's Outriders, which we drew. Okay, opponent is something white. Didn't have a play. Uh, which means they don't. We will not be able to counter our spell this turn. So I think we just run out a Goblin Picker. And honestly, if they're wanting to go one for one with our Goblin Picker, they are more than welcome to. Aha, they have Flash. Resolute reinforcements. A 1 1 that makes a 1 1. Cool. Well, that makes me happy to have a goblin picker out. Uh huh, they're cutting it down. Okay, this is all good and fine. Cut down's a pretty cool card. One mana instant. Destroy target creature with total power and toughness, five or less. Nothing wrong with that. We don't have a play here on turn three a tap land unsurprisingly next turn it even if we don't draw a green source we can run out the eerie soul tender they have a captain's call making three more soldiers so now they have five one ones in play and they're hitting us for two so it's 16 to 20 and they've got a pretty big board over there okay we did draw a green source that's good but it enters tapped that's fine we'll play an eerie soul tender Milled some stuff, a Bortuck Bone Rattle, a Root Walla, and a Blight Pile. Blight Pile would have been a great thing to have drawn in this game, but that's okay. Will we trade off our Eerie Soul Tender for a 1-1? Probably, if, if we have that chance. They have a Phyrexian Warhorse kicked. So it's a 3-3 that made a 1-1. And now they can pay one and sacrifice a creature to give Phyrexian Wars plus two, plus one. Spooky. All right, we have enough mana now that we could cast Myria's Outrider, but I kind of prefer running out a Deathbloom Gardener. The 1-1 one, one Death Touch Mana Dork. And holding up a Battle Rage Blessing to hopefully take out the War Horse. If they even attack with it. I guess there's a world where they just swing with their four dorks. Play Banalish Sleeper. Kicked. So we're going to sacrifice a creature. So we lose our Deathbloom Gardener. Does that just kill us? So they can plus two, plus one, two, twice. They're only attacking with the Phyrexian War Hours. Why did they do that? It's nine to twenty. I don't know why they did that. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess now we can Myria's Outrider. A 
four four reach. It's gonna do five damage to their face. Full domain. It's nine to fifteen. I mean, we're pretty much hosed, though. They unfortunately, they won for one to each of our creatures we played, but they had a fast enough start, and now they have a destroy, destroy evil. Okay. Just one for wanting every creature we have, and then our Gyvian Phalanx 4-4 four, four Vigilance. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't done, it's definitely done now. I believe that's just lethal. Yep, it is indeed. O2. Oh, Can we do it? Can we go for the coveted skunk O3? Well, let's find out. This is it, folks. Do or die. Put up or shut up. Win a game or go O3. And, and quit the format and uninstall Arena. Okay, I won't do those things, but I would really like to win. I really don't want that shame. I just have to motivate myself for this game and this format. It's been so bad for me. <laughs> uh, I will keep this. Yeah, opponent's going first. We're not, we're not surprised. We have two tap lands and then a good hand. Uh, Eerie Soul Tender, Herloon Battle Him, Bortuck Bone Rattle, Here's Outrider Bolt Monstrosity. This is all fine, especially on the draw. Herloon Battle Him, an A-, minus, according to LR Boys. Will it be enough to snatch a win from the jaws of getting skunked? They're going for a Fiashino Branch Rider unkicked. It's just a 1 mana 1 1 haste. They can pay 2 and a red later to give it plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. It depends what their draw is. It might be, I mean, we're not doing anything for a while, so it might well be that a 1 mana 1 1 haste. Now they're casting Furious Bellow on it. Boy, the pressure to win this game just got a lot, lot higher. So they just paid two mana to get in an extra three damage, basically, on us. It's 15 to 20. Play a land and pass. We have not drawn a third land yet. And if we don't draw one on our next turn, we will not have a play or a land drop. We will discard a card. Sucks. <laughs> okay, they're hitting us for one again. It's 14 to 20. They are currently Naya, the Mountain of Forest and the Plains. And they play, is that a rare? It is. Rod is Firebrand. 3 1. And it attacks target creature defending player controls with power less than Rada's can't block. That's pretty good. And then Domain. Pay six to give it plus two, plus two, cost less for each. Land type, basically land type you control. We did not draw a land, so we're going to be passing. And let's discard this for board repossession. I don't see us having the time to get something back from our graveyard. Opponent hitting land drops without breaking a sweat. They could smack us for six this turn if they wanted. Instead, they're casting and kicking another Viashano Branch Rider, so they're actually hitting us for seven. We drew a land, a tap land, but now we're dead. Literally have nothing that we can do. Game over. Wow. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. This deck had a lot of promise, I thought, and I know I say that pretty frequently. All the decks I've drafted I felt pretty good about, which is so puzzling this format. In game number one, which was a heck of a game, we cast a Temporal Firestorm uh, with a kick. So we saved our creature and Plague win their side of the battlefield. Then we cast... How many Marius Outriders do we cast over the course of that game? At least three, maybe four? So three or four, four, four reaches that domed our opponent for four to five damage each time. And we barely were unable to pull it out. We were one point away. And then these other two games, we got ranched in the last game by black-white aggro. One for one removing our threats and then just hitting us with a bunch of 1-1s. One and this last game, we never drew a third land, even though we had two in our opening hand. <sighs> Them's the breaks, I guess. I don't know how much to read into this. Ultimately, I, I am still looking at a pretty small sample size, so... 
maybe I should just buckle down and keep drafting until my head explodes. <laughs> Tune in next time for me having an aneurysm on the recording, and I'll see you then. <laughs>